just as with many other operating systems, we're going to talk about some basic hardware recommendations. Now, for the most part, Linux is free of hardware restrictions so that you can only install it on a certain set of hardware. Now, the really nice thing about that is, for the most part, regardless of what hardware you're running, you can install various Linux distributions. Now, as you can probably guess, some distributions are going to be more hardware specific than others. For example, EWRT Linux is Linux written specifically for the Linksys WRT54G router. So you couldn't install that onto a PC. It was written for a specific set of hardware. But when we're talking about standard Linux distributions, almost any hardware will work properly for you. Now there are also various hardware compatibility lists and hardware checks out on the internet. And I've included one site here that might be beneficial to allow you to go out and check to make sure that your hardware is going to be supported by certain kernel revisions. Now, depending on where you're going to install your distribution from, you can have a CD-ROM drive or a floppy drive to boot the system, or if your system supports FTP installation or Pixie boot, then you can actually boot up and install it from a server out on the internet. And that's pretty rare. Generally, we'll do what's called a localized install or a local installation of the operating system, usually via CD-ROM. Now, for the most part, you want to have at least 5 gigabytes free space on your hard drive. Now, if it is formatted and partitioned, you have the ability to choose many options during the installation, such as making room for the Linux install or blowing everything away and installing Linux over it, essentially deleting everything. So you've got some variations there, but you definitely want to have about 5 gig of free space just for Linux. Now, in order for Linux to run comfortably, I recommend about 256 megabytes of RAM. Now, this is a give-and-take situation depending on the distribution that you're running. For example, I've got a version of Linux running on an old 133 megahertz Pentium processor with 32 megabytes of RAM, and it runs very well, but it's an older distribution and serves a specific purpose. For a more generalized distribution, such as Red Hat, or Debian, you're going to want to beef that up a little bit and give the operating system some room to breathe. Now, probably the most confusing part of a Linux installation and configuration is the monitor or the display. Because there are so many different brands and variations of monitors out there, you definitely want to make sure that you have hardware that is supported. Now, for the most part, nearly every monitor in existence is supported at least in text mode by a Linux distribution. But you want to make sure that for your viewing pleasure, your monitor is going to support a 1024 by 768 resolution and at least 24 bits of color if you plan on using the X Windows graphical environment. Now, most of your Linux distributions have generic VGA drivers that will allow you to configure them to at least run in 640 by 480 or 800 by 600 resolutions, and probably with a lot less color variation. Now, I definitely recommend having both a keyboard and mouse, although most Linux distributions will definitely support you installing just with a keyboard, although most Linux distributions do not support solely installing with the mouse. So you definitely want to have a keyboard handy. Now, a 400 megahertz or better processor is definitely going to be recommended, although, as I mentioned before, a lot of the older and specific distributions will run with a lot less processing power. Nearly every video card out there is supported in text mode, but the real trick is finding the drivers to allow X Windows to run in a graphical environment. So you want to make sure that you get a video card with a manufacturer that supports the open source movement and probably has various Linux drivers available to you, or at least get an older, what we call a clone PC video card, or a generic video card that probably has freely available drivers. Now as far as sound cards, because most sound cards are created under a specific set of standards, they're going to be supported under the Linux operating system. And one of the problems I've run into in the past is some of the very old, slow CD-ROMs. 
Sometimes they can time out or fail or just maybe flat not supported by the various distributions. Another thing is something called a wind modem or a software-based modem. The problem you run into there is most of those wind modems or software modems are built to run in a Windows environment. So you want to try to avoid that and use external physical serialized modems. And that will allow you to be sure that they're going to be supported by the Linux operating system. Anytime you run into some questionable hardware, you want to check your specific distribution site or the specific distribution's hardware compatibility list. And you can usually find that pretty easily because from one distribution to the next, you're going to find some variations in hardware and driver support.